people. Welcome to the Stitch People podcast. I'm Lizzie Bean, your host and the founder of Stitch People, where our goal with cross-stitching is to inspire your personal creativity. And our goal with podcasting is to help you make some new friends while you're at it. Today's episode is such a great conversation uh, between me and Rebecca Peters. She is a stunning individual. I really think so. And the more we got to talking and the more she shared who she is and what she's up to, just the layers of this incredibly loving, kind, thoughtful person who at the end of our conversation, I even tell her, I don't know how you have so many hours in the day to do what you do. She is a mother, she is a teacher, and it was such a pleasure to sort of shoot the breeze with her and get to know her, um, not only just from, you know, crafting and stitch people, but uh, so many nuggets of wisdom and inspiration beyond. So I hope you enjoy today's episode with Rebecca Peters. Hello, Rebecca. Hi, Lizzie. (laughs) Thank you for being here. How are you today? I'm doing well today. Good, good, uh, good weekend day for you. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful weather here. So it is here too. I uh, spent some of the morning sitting outside chatting with Spencer. It's it's like that chilly, sunny for us here, which is nice. Where are you calling from? Um, just outside Atlanta. Oh, oh, I live Atlanta. We were supposed to move to Atlanta. I know. I heard. I heard that when you said that. I was like, oh no. We uh, yeah. This time last year, we were gearing up to go and looking at houses and. uh, Last January, we went out and like explored neighborhoods. We really liked um, Marietta mm-hmm. and Decatur. And yes. uh, where, We're in where Decatur. Are, oh, you We're are. In I was going to say, mm-hmm. oh, that's so great. <laughs> right. I, I still occasionally will get alerts. I have some um, some settings still on on Redfin that's like new listing in like Brookhaven or like, oh, and it's just so nice. We just, life, uh, life dealt us a few unexpected swings this year. So we are. Sadly, not in Atlanta. I don't know if we will or not at this point, but we really enjoyed it. Have you, were you born and raised there? No. So I grew up in Massachusetts. Okay. And um, I went to college in New York. My whole family is in Massachusetts still. I have two brothers. I'm one of six kids. So I have two brothers in um, Colorado, but everyone else is up north still. And then I went to college in New York and after college, I was a volunteer in Belize for two years, so cool. I got used to the sun. Yeah, and I just couldn't do the the New England winter. Yeah, New England's intense. My parents, uh, my my dad's from New Jersey, my mom's from Buffalo, New York. I kind of grew up in Rochester, so okay. The uh, yeah, winters winters up there are crazy, and my parents just uh, retired to Southern Maine. Usually, people from Maine retire to sunnier areas, but uh, all my family's in New England as well, and boy, are winters intense up there. Three feet of snow, just like that. Just And Halloween one year. I mean, it's early and late. It's not oh, even yeah. like you can predict that it's going to oh, be. Oh, yeah. Right. The number of Halloweens where I had to cover up my costume with my big winter coat because it was snowing. It's just crazy. So exactly. I love that Atlanta's a nice, because you're still on the East. That's my parents were really excited, my New England parents, because Atlanta is just like a quick four hour little, you know, not even exactly. two hours, two hours. I was going to say it's four us. hours from, yeah. from Salt Lake to the East coast, but, um, yeah, just a quick little two hour flight. They were excited for us to be at least in the same time zone with yeah. your family. So that's nice. It is. Yeah. Do they come and visit you often? They do. Um, actually my parents are coming for Thanksgiving. Oh, nice. Um, for the first time in a while. Right. Obviously uh, they used right. to come more. <laughs> right. But... Yeah, we're, I think people think Atlanta is warmer in the winter than it is. It certainly <laughs> is not like so snowy, but it, we're not tropical. So sure, for sure, sure. My brothers have come for Christmas, like with shorts. And I'm like, well, that's not really. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, close, <laughs> I guess. Quite. Right. The beach, still, still but. Still need the coat, but. Yeah, but it's, it's certainly not freezing. Right. Anyway. So uh, what did you do in Belize? That's so interesting. Yeah, so I was a volunteer. Um, it's kind of like the Peace Corps, but it was with the Catholic Church. It's called oh, cool. Jesuit Volunteers. So um, I taught in a special ed school for a oh, year. Neat. And then I worked in a daycare center for children affected by HIV for a oh, year. Interesting. Um, yeah, and you like live in a community. You're, you only get like a $60 stipend a month. So it was, it was a great thing to do right after college. And yeah. What a cool experience. To travel a lot around Central America and right. meet super interesting people. Still good good friends that I have from that I love time. That. So. so you keep in touch. That's great. Mm-hmm. Have you been back since? 
So I actually married someone <laughs> from Belize. Hey, perfect. <laughs> For a while, it was perfect, <laughs> Not perfect anymore. But so I did go back a couple of times, and okay. so my I have two children, so okay. they have never they've never gotten to go. Um, but someday I hope because they have grandparents there. Yeah, family down um, there. But uh, it's just <laughs> lots it's a, of big trip. Yeah, now. lots of big trip to with do. a lot of people, and in a really interesting time to travel, no less. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Some someday, someday yeah. that'd be great. Go down and see the see the family down there. That's yeah. wonderful. How exciting! So, have you done much other travel in your life, or has it been kind of that you know the bigger trips and you know things like that? No, I was. I, I mean, I've been really lucky. Um, when I was fifteen, I was an exchange student um, to France for a year. Ooh, do you speak French? We oui. now I do. Ah, I did not. I did not. I've been speak doing a word. Duolingo myself for French With lately. French? I'm I'm like I just started it like a month ago, so I know. Um, uh, yeah, just very basic words. <laughs> but I, I'm fast. I think French is just the greatest language. It's so that's, cool. You got to go do that. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's like um, I just went and lived with a family. My family got a French kid for a year, and. Um, it was really cool. And I was That's like in great. French high school, didn't understand anything. But then by like Christmas, I could talk, I could speak French. <laughs> I could that understand is so cool. what was happening. That's so. incredible. Do you feel like, were you really struggling and like actively listening and making sense of it? Or do you feel like your brain kind of did a lot of the processing in the background and like one day it just kind of clicked? Yeah, no, I think, I think that it, that sounds about right. Because I remember, I mean, you know, that thing where you learn a new word and then all of a sudden you hear it everywhere yeah. and you're like, <laughs> this word has always been around me. I just never realized it. Right. And I remember when I heard, I don't know, the French word for swimming pool, which is piscine. And I was like, is this the first time I've heard someone say the word swimming pool or have I just been hearing it and I never knew what it right. meant? And then all of a sudden, you know, things that you've been hearing, it just suddenly makes sense. So. Oh, that is so cool. The human mind. It's that amazing. It really is. Well, and they say they, the royal they, uh, they say that the best way to learn a language is to just go Be because of that, because it's like a sink or swim and humans are built to survive, you know, so our brains just like compute, compute, compute and, and, uh, and make it happen. When I remember, like I had to take biology in French, like I could not, you know, I still don't know a lot Whoa. of biology because the year I took biology in high school was in French. So I yeah. only learned like the second half of the year's worth. Um, so I think just being in school, especially and all the, my friends yeah. only spoke French, they kind of took me on as a little project because there, of course, everyone speaks English and they were much better at English than I was at French oh, <laughs> by the end. They kind so. of like took you under yes, their and wing. Would explain things to me and stuff. So, that's so nice. I had to take Spanish in French. Ah, right? <laughs> that makes my brain explode. Did you retain your Spanish? That, like, was that useful to you when you were in uh, South America? No. And actually Belize speaks English. Oh. Um, it's like Jamaica. Oh. Um, Think of it like well, Jamaica. I mean, go. yeah, yeah. They speak Engli a Creole. English speaking. English speaking. It used to be called British Honduras. The Queen's okay. on all the money. <laughs> um, so, I don't. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> I just speak French and English. Well, there you I didn't go. really learn any Spanish doing that. <laughs> That's all right. But well, it's just like you said, where you learned biology in French. I'm sure it wasn't super helpful to learn Spanish in French. French as an English speaker. Whoa, that's like that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> But, and then, yeah, and then I was a French major, so I got to go back for a year in college. So oh, great. I was lucky So you've to... done a lot of travel. And then for 15 years, I've done no travel at all. <laughs> so... eh, it comes in waves. I feel the Someday. same way. I played, um, I was a trombone player and I studied music in college and I was in the jazz band and the wind symphony. And my first year in college, we did a tour of Scotland and England and then the Wind Symphony went to South Korea and Japan. And then the third year I went to Scandinavia. And then I didn't go anywhere for like 10 years. <laughs> and then finally, my sister went to grad school in uh, in the UK. And my husband and I visited there. And I went back on my own once. But since then, we haven't really visited anywhere abroad anyway. So, yeah. so it's, no, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's both like I find that when I travel, it's always easier than I think it's going to be. And I always go like, why don't I do this more? But then you get home and you're exhausted and you need a vacation from your vacation and it's expensive and it takes a lot of planning and it, it, it is also difficult, you know, so it's both. 
Yeah, I think I grew up with the idea that like a vacation is like do it, do, do, do another Same. thing, another thing, plan as much as Same. you can. And so I always think vacations are like more tiring than they are relaxing. Right. And a few years ago, um, for it was like my daughter's birthday, Mother's Day for me and my mom and my dad had an anniversary or something. So we went together to like a like a horse like it was like a horse farm cool. but you like everything is on the farm you just stay and everything is there and it, there was nothing to do right so it was the most oh. relaxing vacation I've ever had I love that and I said this is the kind of vacation uh -huh. we're taking from I, now we had the exact same thing happen the first time we took a cruise because that one in particular for us Spencer and I there's no wi-fi on a cruise, unless you like really, yeah, it's very expensive, but we didn't have internet or cell phone access. So like we couldn't even check our emails if we wanted to. And we were forced to just stop. And it was like, oh, and there, I mean, it's a cruise ship, so you can't, I mean, you're getting off at ports every other day, but like, yeah, there's nothing to do. And that's when I, we now have a distinction between taking a trip and taking a vacation. Oh, that's good. That's Where a it's good like, one. Cause sometimes, especially when you're abroad, like if you go to if we go to Paris, I want to see the Louvre. I want to see Notre Dame. I want to see like, or Notre Dame, I guess. Um, you know, I want to see the sites, which that'll be definitely more of a trip than like just a relaxed vacation. But a horse farm, that sounds so, did you get to do much hands-on stuff there? Yeah, my one daughter is like super into horses. So mm. they they let you do all the things to prepare your horse for the ride. And then you do the ride and then you do all this stuff to unprepare your right <laughs> de-prepare de that's I great I didn't do any of it I just watched but yeah. they, they were really into it oh that's so it's great nice. yeah. I love that that reminds me of there's nearby here a uh, you mentioned you taught special ed for a year there's a horse therapy place oh here. yeah where especially a lot of uh special one of my really good friends is a special ed teacher at the high school and um and I think I think that's how I know about it, but um, it's for uh, special education, but they come in, it, it's like horse therapy and they we interact with the animals and help take care of them. And, and there's like this very calming, energetic thing that happens, which is really cool, very symbiotic. Animals are unbelievable. I mean, it's unbelievable yeah. how people who can connect to animals. Right, that's... right. And in, in like oh, no. a, an unspoken inherent way, you know? And I think it's so interesting, um, that children often are such animal lovers. Like it seems like every young girl goes through a horse phase. I mean, I even did where I had like little horses, like it's just kids are so, um, kids are adults just without all the, like the jadedness of life. <laughs> and so I think it's like, it's very interesting to me that kids tend to be really into animals in this like inherent way. It's very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love no. that. My kids are into all animals. Like right now we just have a cat, a turtle and two gerbils. Oh, but they um, want a snake. They want, I mean, every, they, you know, whenever we hear of someone having a pet, they want the pet. And I have to remind them like, <laughs> like we've already got a few, <laughs> we've got a few. And also yeah. we, cause our family's far away. We go, like I'm a teacher. So we go for the summer to visit oh, my fun. parents and we have to yeah. pay someone to take care of our yeah. pets for the summer. We can't have a dog because right. that's not a fair life for a dog. So um, but they would, they would have all the animals yeah. <laughs> if oh, they could. I love that. Yeah. I had hamsters growing up. I want, I admit, I still would love a lizard. Someday I'll have a lizard. I don't know if it'll be an iguana. I like the little ones in like a little, anyway. like a gecko. Yeah. I always, I don't know. I think they're just so cool and so fun. So fun. So That's another, okay. another point for Atlanta. Cause we have them like crawling up our buildings. There you go. <laughs> so. There you go. You don't have to own one to have them around. That's yeah. I remember Spence and I lived in California for about a year and a half a while back and, uh, and they have, I don't know what they are, but tiny little things and you'd see them on the balcony yeah. or up the palm trees. And it was like, ah, just makes me happy. <laughs> so I see you on the zoom call. You've got a nice little quilt square behind you. That's really fun and vibrant. Let's talk crafting. Sure. What kind of crafts do you do? Uh, clearly we've got quilting and I know there's a cross stitch overlap. Give me like the whole overview of all of the fun hobbies and crafts that you oh my you gosh have going I, feel like, on. I feel like I do all the crafts I feel like yes. um we like I grew up in a super artistic household um cool. my mom is a potter um my dad does stained glass I have two mm -hmm. brothers who both make their living through glass blowing that and then my sisters so cool. 
and my sisters and I knit and quilt. So my sister taught my older sister who I idolized. She's seven years older than me and she was the coolest person. She taught me to knit when I was 16. Oh, wow. And I just thought it was the coolest thing. And I didn't know anybody who my, I have an aunt who does stuff like that. And my sure. mom did, but it, when your mom does it, I don't know. It wasn't cool. <laughs> right. did it. Right. it was cool that my sister did it. Um, so I definitely started with that. And then my aunt gave me a sewing machine when I was in grad school. Um, and then when my kids were born, I started sewing a lot more things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've always liked to do embroidery, but, um, and then I found cross stitch actually with you with right at the beginning of the pandemic. So I think I had done one or two things, but this is the most cross stitching I've ever done. Cool. Um, but I also love like paper crafts. I do bookmaking, um, bookmaking, what kind of books? Oh, all kinds of books, like journals, but also like flip books. And um, because I'm a teacher, right? So I teach my kids how to make books about whatever, whatever. Yeah, just like their little research projects and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's Um, so cool. And then um, recently, my most recent thing is like spinning wool. What? So... So I, I, I'm assuming you're spinning wool and then you're using it to knit. To knit or weave or, I mean, so I'm like oh a, ju- you know, gosh. I'll just see a new idea and I'm like, yeah. oh, I need to try this. So right, right. <laughs> at oh, some how point. how cool, how exciting. I've done a lot of, th- it was like, you know, have you ever seen that? It's like my aunt had this magnet, but it's like, she who dies with the most fabric wins. Have you ever <laughs> seen that? <laughs> I haven't, but I know a lot of people who would probably relate to that. That's great. And so like my closet has some clothes, but mostly it has craft supplies. So when the pandemic hit, we were lucky because my my girls are 10 and 12. So they mm. also love to make things. And we didn't need to go to a store because everything we had. We already had all of already the supplies had that we needed away. for all of our crafting needs for basically the last, what, year and a half. That so. is so fun. That's really cool. It's it's neat that you had the opportunity to actually kind of dig through your craft closet, craft bins, whatever it is. Everybody's got their own system. But like that you could go revisit some of these things that uh, – that you've stashed away. Cause I'm, I'm the same where I'll buy a cross stitch pattern that I like. And I'm like, Oh, I'll get to that eventually, you know, and you kind of forget about it or, you know, I've got a, my own little stash of fabric. I'm not much of a quilter, but I do want to try it sometime. I made some squares once, but long ago. So I, I have to reintroduce myself, but I haven't ever really had or given myself the time or opportunity to actually like dig back in. And were, were you surprised by some of the stuff you found or did yeah. you have a sense of what you were what you had available I I mean I think we mostly knew what what I had but um it's nice because you sometimes go through like sometimes I'm just really in the mood to knit and I just am glad that I have sorry I have all the things that I need or patterns saved up or yarn saved up but sometimes you're like no 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 I want to get my sewing machine out so you can kind of go through phases of what you're really totally into at Mm -hmm. the time so it's nice. And then you never know, especially with kids, you want to do something. I'll see a project online. It's like 11 PM. I can't go to the store and get what I need. <laughs> right. I already have it. So yes. You could jump right in. You never know when inspiration is going to strike to like it's make true. something. Or And I, I hear in that statement, 11 PM. That's usually when I get the, <laughs> I get the urge to do things at strange hours. I'm trying to give myself permission to lean into that. Like I will often get a bolt of inspiration late at night and I'm like, it's late. That's silly. And I like talk myself out of it and think, oh, I should go to bed. Like that's, that's stupid. I'm not going to jump into that. But then I usually just like stay up anyway and watch a TV show and, and I'm, I'm going to bed late anyway. So I might as well just do the fun thing that I feel feel inclined to do do you do that when you get the inspiration you'll just let yourself jump right into it and get started I mean it, it definitely depends on if I have to be up early for sure course. for sure just on a weekend for sure I would because yeah. uh, it's night when you because sometimes you don't want to you know you don't right. always want to do a craft. right yeah sometimes it feels a little like work especially when you've started it and you're like mm-hmm. I have to finish it before I can start this new other fun project right. I have to finish this other one so whenever I think whenever you're in the mood to do it you should just try to try to I do it. I love that. That's going to be a gold nugget for this episode, I think. Yeah, when when the mood strikes, you do it. Especially with I don't know why like 
That feels so self-imposed, but but it's so universal what you just said of, oh, I, I really should finish the first project before I do the second project or whatever it is, finish what you're doing. Um, but I'm at the same time a little bit like, why? <laughs> Like, if you don't want to do the first project anymore, why not go into the thing that interests you? Especially if there's nothing tied to it. Like, you're not planning on giving it for a gift. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no one's expecting it from you or anything like that. But, yeah, I like that. For sure, that. it's hard if you, like, mess up. Right? <laughs> yeah. I've had, like, a sweater. Or, right, I have a Ruth Bader Ginsburg, right? So when Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, I made a lot of Ruth Bader Ginsburg How fun. things. And so I have one. So it's, like, been more than a year. And it's just like a black and white of her face. Like it's just oh, cool. a pattern. It's not a stitch person, but a line is off. Uh, and I don't, <laughs> it's just been in a drawer. And yep. at some point, I know this, I know myself. At some point I'm like, I'm in the mood to fix it, but yep. it's not yet. So it's right. just waiting for I love me. that. <laughs> honor, honor when the mood strikes. Just don't force it. Let it flow. And, and I love this self-awareness of like, I know myself someday I'll be in the mood to fix it. That's such a great way to look at it. You don't have to just trust yourself that you've got your own back a little exactly, bit. Exactly, exactly. And, and the timing will be right because it's the timing that's happening, right? So that's fun. So you mentioned that you got into crafting, um, you know, your craft closet anyway, when COVID kind of hit and everybody scooped up at home. You said your girls were doing it with you. Do they... Do you everything that you do? Do you do it together? Or do you all kind of work independently on your own things side by side? Yeah, there there will be times when I'll start something and they all want it. So they can knit and they can sew. And cool. my older daughter is really into sorry, she's she's peeking in the door right now and I'm trying <laughs> to wait for her. Um she's really into um like dolls and oh, doll fun. making and dress okay. making for dolls and things. Um, but also like she does resin now. They like the messy things. They like okay. slime and resin slime. and the things that ruin your furniture. <laughs> but, of course. Um, We've all got to go through a messy phase. They love gifting. They love making gifts, right? Oh, so they nice. love making homemade gifts. So they will cross-stitch bookmarks for their friends' birthdays or teacher gifts. They've made stitch people of their teachers and oh, things fun. like that. So they're they're good. That, that is so great. Stuff like that. And good for them. Good for them to be crafty. And I, is that satisfying for you to see, you know, did they show that interest very naturally or is that something you kind of infused in them? Yeah, I think both. I think they're, I think our, they see it like their grandmother, they, when they go to my mom's a potter. So when we go over there, they get to make, you know, things on the wheel and paint them. So they love looking up to, to people who do that yeah. so I think it makes them feel good um and then they they both are Montessori students so oh, they great. do a okay. lot of stuff like that in the yeah. classroom great also so I love that very creative learning very cool yeah so you mentioned you stumbled upon Stitch People uh beginning of COVID so what is that like year and a half ago ish yeah so do you know how many portraits you've made since you kind of started Stitch Peopling <laughs> probably 30 whoa well done <laughs> thank you well, I love it it's so fun you never I just I never know what that number is going to be for people <laughs> well, sometimes I forget to ask but uh that's so great so it's it's something that you found and and have continued to do it sounds like yeah well in my first one I did a big big one of my whole extended family to oh, give wow. to my parents that was I'm, your first one that was my first one. Oh my gosh ambitious well and done and then yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was ni 19 people. Oh, so it was good. Gosh. And it's, my sister had just had a baby. So it was like, Aww. good. Everyone, there's no additions. At right. This point, right. And it still stands. Um, and then I wanted to do something for my students because we all went home and I usually would like have had a little graduation Aww. ceremony for my third graders because I teach first, second and third grades all together. So I keep my kids for three years. So oh, wow. I wanted to do something and we weren't, we couldn't do anything. So I, I made them each a pencil case Aww. with their stitch person in it. That's um, so nice. So then that's now become the tradition. I had then had to do it, of course, this past year. <laughs> <laughs> so now. Well, at but, least you've only got to do, you're doing just the, the little graduates, just the graduates. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had, you've got three full years <laughs> to, <laughs> to do each person's and, you know, you could get ahead of them yeah. in theory. So yeah. do you, how do you make the rest of the pencil case? Do you quilt that? Or is it all out of Ada? 
No, no, no. Yeah, it's it's not quite quilted, but it's sewn. It's right. like a patchwork style. Oh, cute. Okay. Of fabric around it, and then I just do a back, and I put like batting. So it's kind of, you know, that's iron in. Oh yeah, yeah, Stabilizer, yeah. Uh-huh. and then yeah, a zipper. Give it a little top. stiff. So it's just a little framed, cute. you know, person, and I put some like symbols around with their Aww. names, like the things they love. Yeah, so oh, it's that fun is so for me. Incredibly to think thoughtful. Of. Yeah. Do you? How far in advance do you plan them out? Oh gosh, I mean, so I started in March, probably right, and our school year ends in May. Okay. I think I started with my family, but then I was like doing the other ones on the side that time, and then. This past year, I think I probably started in April and I just gave myself like go two or three nights per kid yeah, <laughs> to plan yeah. it. And <laughs> so you just sort of d- you go down the list, take them one at a time and exactly do them as you're doing them. That's yeah. great. I love that. How yeah. thoughtful that is. So, I mean, I love it. It's funny, the older I get, the more I appreciate, especially my elementary school teachers, because the stresses and, um, just realities of like adult life (laughs) is a lot. And so to look back on my elementary school teachers and the individualized attention and care that like you're showing to your students is just so, so valuable and kind. And uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's very, um, it's like, it's, it's the thing that makes a kid feel special. It's a thing that changes uh, and the attitude of like, oh, I do matter. I can learn. Somebody sees me. Somebody's caring about, you know, it, it's transformative, really. Thank you. Yeah, I think, I mean, now I've been teaching for like 16 years. So the longer I do this, the more I just, it's like all about relationships, yeah. right? Like with your students and with their families. And mm-hmm. they, they're they not going to learn if they don't trust you, especially right. now, right? We're doing all these workshops about trauma-informed mm-hmm. teaching because of everything that kids have been going through yeah. especially and having having a good relationship with with each student is so important yeah oh that's so great well so. a big thank you to you and all the teachers out there because sure. it's uh it is really vital work um so you have mentioned let me I'm just like looking at my little questions we've gone over so much already I <laughs> love it so would you say that your big extended family portrait, is that like your favorite project that you've ever done? Or do you have a different portrait that stands out as your favorite for some reason? Um, I think that one's, uh, that one's probably my favorite. I like all of them for different reasons, right? I like, I made one for my favorite librarian. Like we have a librarian Ah. who helped us during the (laughs) pandemic because normally I would go to the library and get books for my class or for my kids and we couldn't go in anymore. Mm. So instead of requesting specific books, I would just say like, hey, Lauren, we're really into this and this and this. And she would gather up books for me and check them out and put them in a bag. Awesome. So nice. So I made one for her with a little library cart. And I wrote like, this is how I roll. You know, it's just like funny. Like anything that you can put a pun in is one of my favorites. That's So so great. That one's probably my favorite just in terms of like, I don't know. And then when I gave it to her, she... You know, I've heard you say this before because they'll recognize their clothing. Yes, totally. Like, That's my sweater. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh. I wore this outfit yesterday. I mean, that it was just so <laughs> thrilling to give it. Oh, to give I it love to that. Her. Yes. So That's a great endorsement. It is so true. Um, the just even a color choice that, uh, you know, who knows if they have a teal shirt, but you know, teal's their favorite color and they'll just go, oh, teal is my favorite color. You know, it's just little things help people feel so seen and that's yeah. what helps them feel, uh, you know, thought about. Consider- that's what makes it feel so special. They go, oh my gosh, I can't believe you, blah, 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 you know? Even it's just, like I said, just a simple thing like a color choice. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the most detailed thing, you know? That's great. So what do you like to do while you're crafting? It sounds like you do it with your kids a lot. So maybe you're chatting, but if you're ever crafting alone, what kind of, Oh yeah. No, no, I'm mostly crafting alone (laughs) with the kids is definitely the exception. Yes. Um, no, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts Okay. about this one. Yes. Um, (laughs) I hope it, I hope it fulfills all of your expectations. If you have any feedback, you or anyone listening, do let us know. (laughs) 
What, uh, um, what, what are some of your favorite podcasts? Sure. So I listened to, okay, I wrote them down in case I couldn't remember yes. like the names off the top of my head. I mean, so probably my favorite podcast is Judge John Hodgman. Do you know? I have not heard of that. Tell me all about it. <laughs> okay. I'm excited. So John Hodgman, he was on The Daily Show and he was oh. the- he was the PC in the Mac PC commercials. Do you oh, remember those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. So that's the guy. And he, I just think he's quite funny. And um, he has a show where he is like a fake internet judge. And you can write in your like random domestic disputes or people have disputes with like anyone, like some guy had a dispute with his dad because his dad would make the same like dumb joke to waitresses and like toll booth operators and things like that. Like, you know, one of those, yeah. Haha, I'm so funny dad jokes. And so he wrote it in and, and they get the two, you know, litigants on, on the podcast. And oh, he, how settles, fun. he settles it. Um, but in a really wise, but also funny way, you sure, know, sure. It's entertaining and, that but also like, fun. it's always good. It's always the right. You're like, oh yeah, that's exactly what <laughs> they should do. For sure. Sure. Um, so it sounds like he's a very, um, kind of like collected kind of common sense guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good. And, and he'll often make it something totally different but it still makes sense. I don't, I don't sure, know if I'm sure. explaining it well, but I, I really enjoy that one. Like even people will write in with silly things. Like the most recent one was someone just said, which is fancier, a duck or a goose? <laughs> it doesn't Great. even Let's matter. Let's have a debate about like, it. <laughs> that's just a really funny question. Right, to right. Consider. Um, and then, you know, he like, Ooh, brought up now all I'm the thinking about it. Yeah. What did, start, I'm curious. What was his answer? Google, Google, you know, and I, this is terrible. I fell asleep before I <laughs> listened to the yeah. answer. Well, I guess we'll but have to go listen now. Google fancy geese and fancy ducks and you will see so many great pictures. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know the rabbit it. hole I'm going down this afternoon. <laughs> that sounds great. Um, so that's just a good fun, you know, fun one. And then, um, you know, I like news ones and stuff like yeah. that. The Pod Save America people probably have helped me a lot in the last uh, couple of years. And then Ezra Klein, the Ezra Klein show okay. is my favorite for like serious interviews. And he's just also very, very smart. And I'm not a fast thinker. You know, I'll often leave a conversation and think about oh, these are the different things I should have said, you know, I'm sure <laughs> yes, after I relate with up, that. I'll spend the next rest of the evening thinking like, oh, I should have said this. Oh, I should have said this. Why didn't I ask this or whatever? But I'm always impressed with his interviews and how fast his brain works and yeah. how it works and stuff like That's that. That's great. So, That's great. I love yes. that. Well, I'll have to check those out. I love that you wrote them down and, um, you know, we'll, we can maybe find links or something and, oh, yeah. and uh, reference them. So do, is it mostly podcasts that you listen to? Do you ever do audio books or watch shows or anything like that while you Yeah, I watch work? shows. Audio books are tough for me because mm. like I'll get interrupted and then I'll lose my place. And a podcast, oh, yeah, yeah. it like doesn't really matter if right? you stop listening or fall asleep, but an audio book, <laughs> right. like you kind of need to be in it for the whole, I like to read book books. Yeah, the physical, uh, there's something uh, about it something about an actual book versus a, a Kindle or an audiobook. Yeah. I like audiobooks because I can re-listen to them. I've, I've listened to a few audiobooks a couple of times. Okay. But uh, which helps me fill in the blanks, like you said, because you inevitably get interrupted or even if I'm driving, but it's really loud for a portion. So it's not, I'm not really getting it all. But, uh, but there's just something different about holding it and reading with your eyeballs, you know, turning pages. So what audiobooks do you like? Um, well, I listen to, so a few of my favorite audiobooks to listen to are ones where the author will read it themselves. So mm -hmm. there's, uh, for example, I listened to Amy Poehler's book, Yes, Please, oh, okay. was really great. Um, Rain Wilson, who plays Dwight on The yep. Office, he has a book called The Bassoon King that's kind of an autobiography. And that is a great book. It's just sort of about how he got to where he is and who he is and his stories. And that's great. I'm listening to Steve Martin's book right now. Um, so I, I like to listen to, um, I mean, I, I, I like to perform. I do TVs and commercial stuff sometimes. And so, you know, listening to people's stories who've kind of done what I hope to be able to do someday, big dreams, uh, is fun. I also listen to a lot of books, kind of like of a philosophical or spiritual nature. Like I listen to uh, Noah Yuval Harari's book called Sapiens, which that is 
it's so good. Have you read it? Okay, it's it blows so your mind. Good. It's it? it's called like the history of humankind is the subtitle, and it is so good because it not only talks about you know tackling issues of evolution and how humans got to be where we are, but it also talks about biology sort of versus technology and how technology is this like infinitely um, just growing changing thing and and that our biology literally isn't keeping up keeping up with what technology is doing and influencing us to do so that was a good one I listened to another one called um the righteous mind I think every human on the planet needs to read or listen to this book it's called the righteous mind why good people disagree about religion and politics oh gosh (laughs) Uh, by Jonathan Haidt and it's very similar actually to sapiens where it talks about our biological need for tribes essentially is is what he refers to it as and uh, our need to be um accepted basically yeah. and that oftentimes like he's done research on research on research about why people believe what they do and oftentimes people will claim a viewpoint before they actually have any evidence or personal conviction or reasoning as to why they believe what they believe because they adopt what their what you know what their perceived uh, ultimate group that they want to be a part of they'll adopt that belief system because they want to be a part of the group more than they actually will consider why they believe what they believe and I I mean I felt called out left and right reading this book I was like oh my gosh I do that oh my gosh and it really makes you look into your own beliefs even just about little things about how I don't know should you use your blinker on the road like just little things all the way up to of course religion or politics you know the big conversations you're not supposed to have with friends and family but it also makes it a little easier to think about tackling some of those conversations and how to navigate them and how to hold space for people with differing beliefs um and then I really like Eckhart Tolle. I've listened to that. His is one of uh, The Power of Now. His is one that I've listened to that book like four times where it's kind of my go-to of just if I have a half an hour drive or something, I'll just okay stick it on and hear a little tidbit wherever I left off, you know. So, yeah, but I really appreciate especially books by like actors and performers are really fun to listen to because they're often uh, read in such a way that's really engaging. It's more of a podcast delivery. Um, yeah. Uh, who's the, um, (laughs) Malcolm Gladwell. He's an author. So, so great. And he now has a podcast called Revisionist History. History, yeah. So good. And now his audiobooks sort of lean more towards his podcasty habits. And so they're really fun to listen to as well. So, yeah. Those, I don't know. I could talk about it forever because I I do a lot of listening. I'm always listening to something in the background. So. Now, do you feel it? Because sometimes I'm like, I have to turn it off because I'm not even thinking. I'm just... It's like, I always have to be listening to something. I feel right. like I go downstairs and I'm doing the dishes. And if no one's in the room with me, I turn on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like constant. Right, right. I don't know. I input. think there's pros and cons because sometimes, I mean, it does, it helps you learn and often will, you know, if you're listening even to the, uh, I can't think of his name, but like you said, the the funny guy who like settles funny debates, even that can get you thinking about like, oh, well, I guess he has a point about ducks and geese that I hadn't considered. You know, yeah. I think it's very healthy and good to challenge yourself and always be learning and thinking. But I, I do sometimes find that I use it as like an out where I, I know I have like big problems to think of. Like right now we're deep into, um, I don't know when we're releasing this episode, but it's currently November of 2021 and we're deep into thinking about like Stitch People's 2022 plan and like what books we're going to be doing what patterns and blah 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 and it's like all this big thinking and I just I really want to check out (laughs) and not think about it uh you know the big the big problems of life uh so, so I don't know sometimes it's a crutch but of the crutches you could have I it's Maybe one of the more productive ones. Yeah, yeah. Is how I <laughs> justify sure. it. For sure. <laughs> Learning, right? Learning and growing. But yeah, yeah, I definitely think through that myself. I'm like, well, I'll just press play, keep listening. It's fun. Well, they're good because I do like to sometimes watch TV while I'm stitching, but it's hard when you're like always looking mm-hmm. up, looking down. So you have to like put something on that you don't care. Right. If, exactly. You know, something you've seen already yep. or something that doesn't really matter if yeah. you're watching it or not. So um, that's like ha- a harder one. I totally. love like the great British baking show. And then <laughs> I love it all, so much. That's a great all... one. I think to have on in the background though, because I find shows like that, that are formulaic 
where it's kind of the same thing every episode. You, it's not necessarily new information, uh, like it is. It's but it's it's just different information of yeah. kind of the same formula. So you can look away, and and when you when you're hearing them say, "Oh, isn't that beautiful?" That's yeah, your cue to you look up and look say, up. "Oh, they finished the cake, lovely." And then you can <laughs> you know keep stitching. Um, yeah, I love that one. Um, and then there's a bunch of other like there's the great pottery throwdown. Have you watched that no. already? No. It's is on it, H- it it's sounds on like Max. it's going to be similar it's, to the Great British Baking Show. Very similar vibe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where they're like nice to each other, right? Yeah. Oh, I can't yeah. watch American reality TV no. because it makes me stressed. <laughs> yes. Well, and, like, why are they so competitive? And they're so mean to each other. Yeah. <laughs> it's just awful. Um, it's so not fun to me. I agree with you. Like, that's not fun. That's not entertainment. It's stress. <laughs> so there's the pottery one is good. It's, yeah. Um, and then there's a new one. It's not a competition, but someone just told me about it and I love it. And it is called the dog house and it's also oh. on HBO max. And it is literally a re- or like a reality show about people finding the perfect dog. So it's like oh. a little dog organization in England and, and they're British. So they're, they're so naive. <laughs> I think I have a skewed perception of what British people are like because <laughs> like of all these Everyone's shows. friendly and happy and nice. <laughs> There's this wonderful organization in England and it'll be like an elderly man whose wife just died and oh. he needs a companion dog oh, and he no. comes in and the people are like, it's like a dating show, right? They're yeah. like, what? what dog do we have that would be perfect for this man? And then he gets to meet it and then they follow them home and show oh, you what no. their life is like. Oh it's no, so I think I would just cry probably. <laughs> oh my gosh. That reminds me of, um, is it is something like, it's on Disney plus, it's called something like Dog Impossible. Oh. And it's about, uh, it is an American show, but it's about this guy who used to really struggle with like substance abuse and addiction. And he went to rehab and he actually was terrified of dogs his whole life. Like he was attacked as a kid by a really aggressive dog. And uh, after he got out of re- rehab, I think it was, he had a buddy who was like, yeah, you can crash on my sofa till you get your footing. And his buddy had a dog and this guy had to just like get used to it. And it, and he ended up really bonding with the dog. And now he's a dog trainer with a huge facility in LA and a big team. And he specializes in like, quote unquote, untrainable dogs. And his whole philosophy is there's no such thing as a bad dog. And because And it's absolutely true from, I mean, we have three dogs, so we've had to do some training and pack mentality stuff or whatever. And all uh, quote unquote bad dog behavior, all of it is only ever fear-based, like period, period. Dog psychology is such that like dogs will attack when they feel threatened. Like they're rarely offensive. It's usually only ever defensive to a perceived threat, which sometimes looks offensive, but, um, but his whole thing, and, and he feels he feels like he really relates with these dogs that like that's how he used to live his life too and so he's really patient with them and he's never freaked out he's just super calm and like it is like you know those DIY extreme home makeover shows but for dogs (laughs) and I'm always like I I can't watch it that often because it just makes me cry but it's just I don't know something about the dog shows it's happy and it's hopeful and it's great (laughs) that sounds awesome yeah yeah for, you know, for the pet lover in you, <laughs> in all of us. That's great. I love it. Okay. Uh, do you ever listen to uh, music? Are you into music musicians or is it mostly the podcast and stuff? I yeah. kind of go back and forth myself. It's like crafting. You go in phases of well, certain things. There's things you have to do where you can't listen to a podcast, right? So right. the other day I was writing conference reports all day. I needed something on, but it can't be podcast. Right. That's too hard. So yeah, like I love Bruce Spring. I grew up like listening to Bruce Springsteen. Fun. So I love Bruce Springsteen. I love like right now the Avett brothers are really good. I and love then the Avett brothers. Um Ain't no my man favorite show now me. is Ted Lasso. So I've just yep. found this the Spotify playlist of all the songs from oh, Ted Lasso. That's a great idea. That's <laughs> so, so cool. I had and, I didn't think that that of course that's a thing. And it's they great. did such a good job, right? The music on that show is fabulous. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. so perfect to certain moments mm-hmm. in the episodes. So when you listen, you're like, oh, I remember exactly when that song was on yeah. and stuff like that. So that's oh, that's a gr- I'm going to have to go look that up. To. I love that. I did, um, Spencer gave me for my birthday, kind of in a similar vein. I'm a big Beatles fan. I grew up on the Beatles. And Paul McCartney just released this super cool anthology. It's two really thick books of all of his song lyrics 
all of them for everything he's ever written and uh through the whole it's alphabetical and it will show like his you know photographs scans whatever of his notes of like the handwriting oh, wow. of the lyrics and I, I think he wrote the whole thing because it sounds very conversational about like well I was doing this at the time and I thought about this it tells the story of each song and Spotify has a playlist of of all the songs so it's been fun to because I'm I'm a huge Beatles fan, but I don't know a ton about the rest of Paul McCartney's career, um, you know, with the exception of the hits. But yeah. it's been fun to listen through that. And it's like I've discovered he's such a great songwriter, so s- such simple, lovely melodies. And uh, it's fun to, yeah, fun to relate to things you like, like a TV show or a musician or whatever in a in a different way, like through the playlists and everything like that. So, yeah. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, well, I could go on talking about this stuff with you forever and ever. It's so fun to uh, to relate to uh, to people on, you know, not just common interests, but common habits and common yeah. beliefs and all that. Um, I would love to ask you one question before we get to our rapid fire round, because you're a teacher, you're a mother, you're a maker, you do all sorts of great things. I love to sort of ask people, what does the word success mean to you? Sure. Um, I mean, I think it just means being happy with your choices and with what you've, what you've got in your life. I think not having a ton of regrets or looking back and thinking, I wish I had done this or everything, just kind of having peace with your life to me is like feeling successful. I love that. Peace, peace, feeling peace in your life. Yeah. Because I guess ostensibly that means you're, like you said, there's not a lot of regret or a lot of malcontent you know, you're able to just go to sleep every day with, yeah, with peace, with calm, which is its you know, own form of confidence. Best. It doesn't always, right? I mean, I think my favorite thing that I say to myself is this too shall pass. Yeah. <laughs> because, but you just have to know, right? You're doing your best. Right. Right. My dad used to always say that when I would get, he was a professor. And when I get really, really stressed at the end of a semester and I, oh my gosh, I had papers to write and recitals to perform and concerts to do and finals to take. And he would look at me and he would just say, well, and and, you know, kind of no, like, I don't know what to tell you for getting it all done. But what I do know is that by this time next week, it will all be done, you know, like in those high, high stress points. And it's, and it's true. Like, I don't know how, but every semester I did all the finals and I wrote all, like you just, you make it happen. And there is a little bit of comfort in that, like this too shall pass. Like it's gonna, at some point it will end somehow, some way, and it'll, you know, and you'll move on from it. It'll be a memory. So yeah. Yeah. I love that. Just being, having peace. Well, okay. For our last little portion, I'm just going to throw some rapid fire favorite questions at you. Okay. I know we've talked about some favorite music and podcasts and things like that. So we'll get a little more uh, whimsical and, and basic in our, <laughs> uh, our questions now because I like them to just go fast. So uh, tell me, what is your favorite color? Green. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. What's your favorite shade of green? Um, like grass green. Oh, I love that. Okay. What's your, ooh, what's your favorite place you've ever traveled? You can only pick one. Um, uh, I, I think... My home in France when I was 15, La Rochelle, France is my oh, favorite place. I love that. Uh, what's your favorite flower? Hyacinth. Ooh, hyacinth. That's a great word. Uh, I have to admit, a hyacinth is my favorite flower. They smell so good. They smell so good. They are, and and I love how strong they are, and that, but then they'll topple over, and that always makes me laugh because they just no, get so heavy. I, just, I like the clusters of mm-hmm. them. Me too. So and funny. it's funny. Hyacinths have been my favorite flowers. I have this very vivid memory. There was this woman, my grandma lived in a retirement home and the woman next door to her would always have fresh flowers out on like a little shelf by their door. And I remember once getting off the elevator and the whole floor smelled incredible. I was like, what is that? What is that? Got stronger and stronger, stronger to my grandma's apartment. And the hyacinth was at the neighbor's door. And ever since it's been my favorite, but I always have to think through if it's hydrangeas or hyacinths that I like. Oh, like every time I hear the word, I'm like, that's my favorite, right? It's not a hydrangea. Yes, it's hyacinth. That's my favorite. Because <laughs> for so, the words are the same in my head. Anyway, that was a tangent. What's your favorite dinner to eat? Um, nachos. Oh, yeah. Oh, are you a basic nachos, just like chips and cheese? Or are you like loaded nachos? Yeah, no, I like all stuff on nachos. I love it. I love it. And what is, do you have a favorite game to play? Um, gosh, pitch. Oh, Card what's game? that? It's a card okay, game. I it's hear like all about it. Bridge, euchre. Oh, okay. It's like 
people in the in the Midwest call it's similar, but it's okay. um it's like a card game you play in teams and I love that. Oh, how fun. Okay. And do you have a favorite book? Oh gosh, that's a hard one to narrow down. Do I have a favorite book? Um <laughs> The book I've read the most is To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, that's a good one. Um, the second book I've read the most is The Time Traveler's Wife. Ooh. Have you read that? Right. No, but I, have, I I know I have a friend who told me to read it, and I know they made a movie about it. I kind of know the loose premise. but I think there's books you have to read at certain times in your life, you know, and when you yeah. read a book at a certain time. So when I read that book, it was like the perfect book. <laughs> I read it so many that. times. I love it. Okay. And last but not least, this one's hopefully simple. What's your favorite season? Summer, fall, winter, spring? Spring. Spring. Because that's when the hyacinths come out. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'm really enjoying fall, but oh, it's been a good fall here. It's lasted a nice long while, which is good. I think so. the joy of spring, there's nothing that beats it, right? I mean, it's true. After winter, there's nothing right. better than the first day when you're like taking off your sweater. It's right. So nice. And it's like smells different. It feels different. The little bulbs are budding. I, I love it. Oh, Rebecca, well, it's been such a joy to chat with you and to get to know you and all of the, Thank you. I don't know how you have time in the day for all the things that you are up to, but it is impressive. And uh, I assure you that all of the people in your life are grateful for you because it sounds oh. like you are just a, a ray of sunshine and just a thoughtful loving person in the world so thank you that's so nice yeah. of you to say and thank you this is so fun and oh good stitch people just is the best I, oh, I feel so like glad. I didn't get to say that enough oh today, you're so but. nice well I mean it we we definitely want to touch on stitch people and beyond in these podcasts because yeah. the whole point is I mean we all know that we do stitch people we're all in the community together yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, but just kind of expanding the people behind the members of the Stitch People community. Uh, so, yeah, just getting to know you better like we did today. So thank you so, so much. Thank you, Lizzie. What a gal. Am I right? I, I'm so impressed by everything she is and does and chooses to be. Such a great conversation. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the Stitch People podcast. And thanks for enjoying all these conversations with Stitch People like you. We would so appreciate it if you could take a moment and subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a rating and review if you can. Share it with whoever you think would enjoy listening to it as well. It will really help us to shine more cross-stitchy sunshine into the world and to play the silly game of algorithms and all that kind of stuff here in the podcast verse. You can check out everything Stitch People has to offer, our cross-stitch patterns, books, merch, and more at stitchpeople.com. And please connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. We'd love to see all your crafty works in progress. Lastly, I want to thank all of you in the Stitch People community for your support of us and your positive and cooperative encouragement of one another. I'd also like to thank the incredible Stitch People team for making all the magic happen behind the scenes. Our jazzy tunes were created by Jonathan Boyle, and our sound designer, man's man, ladies man, man about town, is the one, the only, Brandon Yost. Have a wonderful day, my friends, and happy stitching. The Stitch People podcast is a production of Beansky LLC and Stitch People. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.